Well, my friends, it is Halloween. And what better way to celebrate the spooky holiday than with our new friend, Ghost Corgi. What I'd like to do is I'd like to take this model, which you can find on Sketchfab. This was made by Jose Diaz. And I'd like to turn him into a ghost. Along the way, I'd like to introduce some new nodes that was just released with Houdini 19 that revolve around VDBs and volume manipulation. By the end of this, Ghost Corgi will be both spooky and technically sophisticated. So, without further ado, let's check it out. The three nodes that I'd like to introduce to you are the Volume Noise Fog, Volume Noise SDF, and Volume Noise Vector SOPs. These guys work on VDBs, even though they mention volume in the name. So, you might not see this as a VDB node, but these guys are designed to work with VDBs, which is pretty cool. And it's also nodes that you may not have seen in some of the teaser releases that SideFX has done, but these guys are really cool and useful. So, all they really do is they provide noises that are designed for fog volumes, SDF volumes, or vector volumes of some sort. Ideally velocity with this volume noise vector. Now it is true that you were able to make all of these noises with VOPs before. However, it just takes the hassle out of the equation. You don't have to make these highly customized kind of crazy setups to uh, add a noise to something. And specifically when it comes to this SDF noise, this is in particular kind of difficult to set up. You can see that there's a lot going on here when it comes to how this was set up. So it's really a node that's all about convenience, the way I see it. I'm not gonna go over what the basic noise settings do. If you're not familiar with noise settings in general, then check out Shading Techniques 3, where I talk about lacunarity, what octaves are, what different fractal types are. This sort of basic noise knowledge is going to be assumed for this particular quick tip. Instead, I'd like to go more challenge-based with this situation. So the challenge I have for you is to create some kind of ghostly aura around Ghost Corgi. I want a volume that extends away from the surface, where along the surface, that's going to be a value of one, and that will gradually fade to a value of zero as we reach a certain distance away. Now, at first, this might sound like an easy thing to do, but it's actually a bit more involved than you might imagine. The first thing we'll do is turn this Corgi right here into a SDF volume. So VDB from polygons. If you're not used to this node, then do check out the node Bible where I talk about all of these various settings. We'll set that as a distance VDB and we'll call this Corgi. So let's set the voxel size for right now, something maybe about 0.05. That's about good for what we need for right now. Once we have that, what I'd like to do is use a VDB extrapolate node. And I talked about this yesterday in a video. This VDB extrapolate is a new VDB node that allows us to modify the SDF volume. In particular, I like to renormalize the SDF and we're going to push out where that zero value exists. So now, that zero value is going to extend outwards. Let's give ourselves less interior band voxels and more exterior band voxels to work with. So we'll say a value of five on that. If you get too close to the edge, it'll start getting all choppy like that. So I think an SDF value, maybe even a bit further, right around here. And then just to be safe, some more exterior voxels. Uh, that ought to be pretty good. And this now leads us to our SDF noise SOP. Let me tell you what these settings do in general. First of all, we want to add the name here, our Corgi field, middle mouse, we call that Corgi. So you want to work on that. What we have up top here is a blend, and this will basically allow you to control how much of the noise is present. We have constant or use volume. So you could also use a mask volume, and that mask volume would dictate where the noise goes. For right now, though, we're just going to not do that. We'll just use a constant. To see what this is doing, let's go down to the amplitude and turn this up to about 0.35. If we go too high, it's going to give us an error. 
So volume to mesh encountered NANs, or an infinite in the input VDB. So if you ever get this, then you need to check the input and consider using the diagnostics tool to detect and resolve the NANs. And by the way, a NAN stands for not a number. So if something has a value of infinity, or if you try to take the square root of negative one, or something that's impossible, I don't think it's possible to take the square root of negative one. I don't know, I'm not a mathematician. But if it runs into something that's not a number, that's called a NAN. Anyway, the reason why that's happening is because look at how close Ghost Corgi is to his VDB container. He's really close, and if we go past that, that's when we run into this value of infinity. So what I found works best for this is if on the VDB from polygons, we keep the exterior and interior band voxels the same value. So let's copy this, so copy parameter, paste that into the interior band voxels, and then also turn up the exterior band voxels so that we have more room to work with. Let's say a value of eight for right now. We have the VDB extrapolate that again pushes things out. And now, as you can see, we have a noise. And if we turn this up, we now have plenty of room to work with until we get to a crazy value that doesn't make a whole lot of sense. If he wasn't creepy before, he is now. So, happy Halloween. <laughs> but uh, yeah, anyway, let's turn up this uh, element size a fair bit. We want something a bit subtle. I'm going to use this noise to just add a bit of variety to how far away our ghostly aura reaches. So in the amplitude, let's take this to a value of about 0.25 or so. Maybe a bit less, maybe about that if we turn up the element size actually. So yeah, maybe an element size of about 3.38 works fairly well. Now we can animate this over time, but before we get to that, I just want to show you how easy it was to deform that VDB volume. And this isn't part of this particular quick tip, but think about the implications this might have for, let's say, remeshing fluid simulations. The fact that I can easily manipulate an SDF volume like this is really convenient because, again, if you had a fluid sim and you wanted to add variety or just even a little bit of these different random shapes along the surface, that would make a huge deal in a fluid sim because that would change the angle of refraction. So, I just want to point that out. We also have all kinds of different noises to use. So we can use sparse convolution, we have the whirly noises, pretty much all the same stuff as what you would imagine in a mountain sop is available to us here within this noise pattern. So that's really, really cool. We can also use expressions. So here we have some different parameters to modify. It understands these variables by default. So the position, the element size, the offset. Maybe you want to do this based off of the bounding box of an object or something. We do have a randomized per primitive. So we do have a uh, little preset for this sort of thing. But anyway, it just goes to show that you can use expressions on this as well, which is really nice. I'll go ahead and animate this noise. What's nice about this animate noise is I believe it's going to repeat itself after a certain number of seconds. So let's say that we repeat this pattern every half a second. We'll say pulse duration is 0.5. In the fractal, I'll add a bit of roughness right there. And I think that all of this stuff looks pretty good. Towards the bottom here, we have these two settings called deactivate and renormalize. And the deactivate in particular is really important. So check out this volume slice. We have this weird square happening in the middle, and that's because of this deactivate checkbox. Now, if I was to convert and say, convert VDB into a fog, we will see that square show up. So we say SDF to fog, and there we go. Now, something I'll talk about here in a minute is how to fix this because we can take our band voxels to manual and turn this to a high value and that will get rid of that. But I just want to point out that when we go to the bottom and we deactivate voxels, that's going to essentially trim out areas 
that this doesn't consider to be active. And in the process, it'll grab things in the middle like that. So if you don't want that, and in this case I don't, then turn off the deactivates, and I'll also go back up to the top and for right now change this band voxels to automatic. We also have this renormalize, and if you turn that off, you might get this sort of jaggedy look around here. And so typically I bring the renormalize, uh, or I, I check that on, just because it improves the results. But I do want to point that out because it'll make a pretty big difference once we go to convert this. Also, if you were to convert this to polygons, this makes a big difference. So let's say we take this to polygons with the deactivate off. If we go inside this mesh, we just have a single layer. However, if we turn on the deactivates, we actually have a thickness. And so depending on the sort of effect that you want, you might want to have a little shell like this or you might just want to have one sheet of polygons. And so depending on what you want, uh, that might be why you check on the deactivate or uh, check it off. The last two settings, the band voxels and the displacement towards the top, have to deal with the way the algorithm works for this noise. So for the displacement, we have closest points, we have along normal, and we have using vector. The normal looks at the gradients of the SDF and it figures out normals based on those gradient values. The closest points takes a look at points in space relative to the SDF. I'm not sure exactly what the closest point is referring to exactly. Perhaps it scatters some points along the surface and it goes from there. Not sure exactly how that works under the hood, but that is an option. And lastly, we have using vector. The nice thing about using vector is that we can specify a direction that we want this noise to apply to. So if you only want this to apply, let's say, in the y direction, then we can just say y and watch this. It only happens in the y direction. <laughs> you can just kind of melt downwards, which is actually kind of a cool way of making a melting effect, perhaps. I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. Anyway, that's what those settings are out there to do. We also have the band voxels underneath that. These band voxels have to basically do with how it reads the gradient away from the SDF. As we saw before, this automatic setting has a tendency to create this block on the inside. So for that reason, I don't recommend it. Instead, you can set this to none and that ought to fix a lot of those values for you. Even if the deactivate is turned on, this is less likely to give you that little middle block thing that we saw before. So if you want a strip of values like this, then I do recommend taking the band voxels to none. And if you set this to manual, you can get rid of that middle block. You just have to keep going up on the half width until it disappears. However, this will be a more expensive calculation, so do keep that in mind. But you can manually set that half width right there. One last thing to mention, and I know this is kind of complicated for some of you guys, so I apologize, but with this band voxel set to none, in order to make this work without the block on the inside, you have to say fill interior. That says that all of these interior voxels are now active. And because of that fact, because we have active voxels on the inside there, when our volume noise SDF goes to deactivate, it's not going to deactivate those voxels. So I'll say that again. If you don't want the block in the middle, set the band voxels to none so that it doesn't try to figure that out by itself. And instead, just say fill interior on the VDB from polygons so that it knows all of the interior areas are active and shouldn't be deactivated by this parameter right here. This all really has implications if you try to convert. And so that's why it's really important to uh, keep all of that in mind. Now, as far as our Corgi goes, back to more important matters, okay? I want to set this to none, and I'd also like to turn off the deactivate. 
so that we have more of a normal gradient happening across here, like so. Let's also check out what these values are doing. So we zoom in, this is negative 0.5, and then we go out about 0.5 away from the surface. So that is what I'm after. Okay, now from here, when we go to, let's say, convert this into a fog. So let's take this guy, convert this into a VDB, SDF to fog. We end up with this, volume slice, and here is our fog volume. The cool thing about this is that now we can just remap this fog volume so that it starts at red along the surface and then fades off to a value of zero. So again, to see those values, now that we've converted to a fog, purple is zero, red is one. That's really good. Let's overlay this with our original Corgi. So we'll take our attribute from map up here. We'll take our convert VDB. And let's just see what happens when we overlay those two together. Looks pretty good. We might want to take our VDBs outward a bit more, but the general idea is working. One last thing. Let's go ahead and take a volume slice. Okay, so we have that and let's template our Corgi. Right now, we're just hanging out around the surface of the Corgi. We're not going outwards enough, in my opinion. So let's turn back on our VDB extrapolate. That was off for some reason. And uh, there you go. Now we have this. Create a volume wrangle, and we're going to remap the density values. So right now, this is still called Corgi. So Corgi is equal to a channel ramp, the name of that ramp is going to be our Corgi ramp. And let's take our Corgi volume. Set that right there. And now we can make it so that by the time we reach the surface, we're about red and then that fades off into blue. And now you can see that we have this effect going on. In the next video, let's talk about the noise for fog volumes. We'll also talk about that vector noise as well. And if you're watching this on the day of release, you can look forward to that part two releasing tomorrow.